I saw him dance down the stairs. I could not tell that his hair caught fire. And it wasn't until I saw everybody rush him that I knew something was wrong. Only because he's so incredibly talented, he did two quick spins, and the fire seemed to go out by his own force. The gloved one was rushed to a California hospital with second and third degree burns on his scalp and neck. Michael was released the next day, but the publicity surrounding the accident ignited a media frenzy. He was the biggest star in the world, and he was doing this commercial, and then there was this, you know, disaster, um, even more of a story. Though a different take would be used in the final version, it instantly became the commercial everyone wanted to see. I remember wanting to see that moment, and but you couldn't see it, so they didn't show it. The ad was originally scheduled to debut during the 1984 Grammys, but MTV offered to air the spot free of charge and hype it as a world premiere event, unveiling it to the MTV generation. In January of 1985, Michael joined forces with Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones to record the humanitarian anthem, We Are the World. I just thought, you know, wow, Michael Jackson's really cool that he helped, you know, organize this. When the video premiered on MTV in March, viewers saw a who's who of American Top 40 singing for a cause with Michael front and center. But it almost didn't happen. Just days away from the historic project, there was a problem. We have 45 artists and no song. Michael and Lionel got together, and I think a day and a half later, they sent me a tape, uh, Michael sent me a tape on the song. It was the biggest all-star jam in pop history, and Michael led the way. We have done it now, and this is no hope at all. Michael was just at the height of his pop powers. He was like the little prince, just spinning his web of goodness. We are the world. We are the children. Everyone seemed to be actually singing with some feeling and some real commitment to the cause, and it was Michael's deal. I also think that it made people more sympathetic to Michael Jackson again, because here he is doing something really profound and using his money for something that was going to help people. During the all-night recording session, the A-list of pop stars turned to Michael for guidance. And if you just believe, there's no way we can fall. If you just believe, there's no way we can fall. The single spent four weeks at number one, but it was much more than a chart success. The video struck a chord with American TV audiences, and We Are the World raised over $50 million for African famine relief. The uh, song did more than Michael or Quincy or I had ever imagined. We are the children. All those stars coming together and donating their money to save the world and st stop hunger was just a very um, important moment in pop culture. In 1986, Michael Jackson and Pepsi signed an exclusive deal to produce two groundbreaking TV commercials. I'm very pleased to announce that Pepsi Cola and Michael Jackson joined forces once again. With Bad due to hit shelves the following year, the soda giant wanted a piece of the action, and they paid dearly for it. At a reported $50 million, the contract was the most expensive endorsement deal of its time. Let's face it, it doesn't need any more money, but you get this feeling that, you know, he sits there with his agent and says, okay, well, what's the best deal? What's the most outlandish thing we can ask for? Let's ask for that. I mean, yes, of course he sets up a precedent. I think that, you know, he definitely paved the way for, you know, Michael Jordan with Nike and even, you know, Tiger Woods with Nike. In true Jackson style, the commercials were no ordinary ads. When the spots made their world premieres on MTV, they generated as much excitement as one of Michael's videos. That was 
you know, kind of a turning point in, uh, in marketing and advertising as well as in the music industry because it was another way that these celebrities could actually make money and be huge stars. Viewers were treated to the King of Pop live in concert and TV commercials were changed forever.